So we are literally in the final week, people. Heart of Candles for when she comes in. And he's like, oh, this is for like all of our good memories and stuff. And she's like, oh, well, that's a lot of candles. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, there were a couple of times that I disagreed with the, with the experts, man. And again, this is just my, my opinion from what I'm seeing. So even the way his attitude with her, when he was talking about it then in the apartment, I thought was just kind of off. She's not asking him to go and mine to Japan. She's not asking him to go down deep, deep, deep sea diving or to go and find a new planet in space. But even if they're not talking, there's a lot that they're doing within the not speaking space. Polly basically turned around and said that you are a narcissist. And that's when she gives her whole, you know, Keisha Cole, like, love. I, you not. Surely, after you calling me that in front of a room for the people and the nation, it's done. But cleaning up. What going on, going people, Dems? Um, so, we are literally in the final week, people. Like, it's been such, it's been such an interesting and varied very few weeks when it comes to this show because as much as like I went into it being like I can't believe I'm reacting to Married at First Sight um but it is a show that I do watch do you know what I mean but it is interesting when you actually got to like record any kind of commentary about it like how much you really do think about like the the con I say the contestants the participants and I don't know like it I, it, it's just been very interesting for me, at least anyway, reacting to this. It's been very, very, very interesting. But this episode, this is episode 33, I don't even think I remembered exactly what was due to be shown because it it really does go off. So it showed Sasha obviously declaring her love for Ross and how much she loved him and how she may never love a man again. I've never loved another man again. <laughs> Amy telling... Luke, that you, you're you definitely not what I ordered, like, which sounded harsher in the soundbite rather than actually how it was delivered. You had uh, Nathan and Lacey that were just all kind of loved up, but then you had Polly and Adam, and obviously he, like, he kicked out his chair and she got up and, you know, cussed him off and did da 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 but you didn't see how bad, we did well, we didn't know how bad that argument was due to get. That argument got bad. That argument got bad, got very bad. So it starts off with Lacey and Nathan like getting, so they're all getting ready for this final dinner, basically. So this is the final dinner party. So it's the final dinner party and, but it's like daytime. And what really threw me is that Nathan was like to Lacey, cause she was in a dressing gown and stuff. And he was like, oh, you know, good morning. Um, and I was like, so you doing the dinner date? So, I mean, maybe it's just how it's recorded and stuff, do you know what I mean? So maybe it's not actually at night time, but in my very naive head, the dinner was at night time <laughs> because it's dinner. So I just thought it was just really weird that it was an inner tux at what appeared to be like 9am. But anyway, so they're getting ready and, you know, they're talking about how excited they are about, you know, going into it, but also kind of sad that it's coming to an end and how happy they are with where they are in their relationship and stuff. So they're really cool. It cuts to, I think, Sasha and Ross. Sasha's like, sad, I think, that the, I guess, experiment's coming to a close because she's very much like, you know, I just really want this to work. And I can kind of understand because some of the kind of, like, hostile situations that both her and Ross have been in, had it not been for, like, a weekly check-in, whether it's the commitment ceremony or the dinner party or the fact that they've got the experts on hand or the fact they've got this, like community and support system around them it might be that their issues may never have been reconciled do you know what I mean so I can understand why she's like oh I'm actually really nervous and also because they still don't know where they're gonna live and you know I've been thinking about this right and you know I definitely would want to be close to my family like 100% and I know that they would deep down want me to be close as well but I don't think they would ever turn around and be like you're not going just to be clear, you're stopping here. Like, I don't, I don't think, I mean, and I, I know they haven't necessarily said it verbatim like that, but it's, there's still a lot of like emotional, I'm not gonna call it guilt, because ultimately like each of their families do want them to stay and both of them have recognized that. But I do, I'm just like, I, I was kind of rewatching like one of the other episodes and stuff when Sasha's parents were like, you know, we'll be wanting to stay here. I think the only thing that I would say is I kind of, 
agree where there are arguments like the ones that they've had. I wouldn't want my family member like going anywhere either, if I'm honest. Just because that is, I'm just not over it, guys. I don't, I don't know if anyone else is yet, but I'm just not over it. Like that level of like anti-social behavior, <laughs> yeah, just does not wash. I'm sorry, like I'm still not over it. So I can kind of understand why um, she, she kind of wants the experiment to be kind of ongoing. But yeah, Ross is up for it. Like he's like, yeah, bring on the last dinner party. Then uh, Luke and Amy. Luke, I think he, you know, he's taken a lot of, I guess, reality from what the boys were saying at the boys' night and how he treats Amy. And he's like, I'm very certain that, you know, me and Amy do have some good memories and I'm good for her and I'm good to her, but maybe I just don't show that enough. So he's very much like, ah, oh, I need to do that. So he sets up some like, like candle, some candle, heart, heart of candles when she comes in and he's like oh this is for like all of our good memories and stuff and she's like oh well, that's a lot of candles <laughs> she's like, maybe these can be like for some of our bad ones as well yeah and he's like no 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 he's like you know at the end of the day he's like you know we have had some really good memories and stuff and you know i'm really really keen to kind of like focus on that and i kind of rate her for being honest because she's like look you've got our rings on which is more than what we had previously do you know what I mean so you know going into it with our rings on she's like but the thing is though there has been you know there have really been some ups and downs and and, and I think what she's doing there is is kind of framing it that like yo the the, the Lumiere wax works on the table yeah that's lovely it's a very lovely thought but you're still a liar you still are a little bit of a liar so and again remember I love me some Luke I do but I think you know he's probably trying to gloss over the fact that, you know, we've had these these issues. Because he, cause he even said, he's like, you know, I, I, it's something that I have to really, like, take on board and stuff, that we are where we are. And I'm like, well, that's great that you realise that, but then you've also got to take stuck in that the other person who has had these dishonest and wild, wildly unnecessary... I know he's like, oh, there were white lies and stuff, but that's that's... That's what makes it even more ridiculous because it's like, well, you just didn't need to lie about them. And yeah, and, and, I, and I get, because the experts have said as well, that like there's probably reasons behind him thinking that he needed to do that. But the impact is still the same. Like even if your intentions or your, you know, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't really mean any ill will and actually you were trying to, you know, present yourself in a better way. Like if you're not honest with someone, they don't know where, they don't know where you stand. So the next time that you're out and some woman is saying that, oh, he tried it on with me and we were in the back of a taxi and da 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 Like, in what way could she believe what you've said when you've lied about some old piece of Polaroid on your, on your, on your fr fridge front that you didn't need to... Do you know what I mean? Like, it just makes it really hard to kind of, you know, be able to vouch for you. So I think that's where some of the issues um, lie. But anyway... But they're going into the, the, the dinner party and, they're, you know, they're, they're still united. Even it might not be the top top, they're united. It then cuts to Polly and Adam. And um, why? Yo, this, this episode in particular, right? I feel as though there was, there, there's been more. I know that what comes later, like with that big blow up, there's like a, you know, there's a, there's a whole discussion about a certain word that Polly calls him. But for me... I, yeah, there were a couple of times that I disagreed with the, with the with the experts, man. And again, this is just my my opinion from what I'm seeing. So I'm obviously not a psychological expert, um, and you know my expertise, I'm not like I'm not you know I'm not Montel. <laughs> so you know this is just my opinion. But I felt that like that conversation was a was a really good marker for how the day was going to go. So it was very much like, I guess, shall we talk about this thing then? So, you know, he's asking Polly how she feels and she's like, well, not great, to be honest. You know, it's not, it's not exactly where you want to be going into the final dinner party. And he's, cause I'm guessing the, the, the disagreement has continued basically about um, the him not knowing where, or whether or not they're going to, you know, the, fu the future for them is uncertain. And she's like, you know, I just feel really crap about it. And he's like, you know, we just keep having the same argument and it's draining and it's dead basically. And I don't know why we have to keep having the same argument. Like you keep saying that you're not going to do what you're doing, which is which is what you're doing right now. Um, but yet you, you do it anyway. And she's like, yeah, but like, 
which I thought was really sad. She was like, oh, I'm, I'm learning, yeah, that like the, the best thing to do is not to voice it basically because obviously that's not a benefit to you or benefit to me or us. So, you know, I just need to learn to stop, you know, just to stop, to stop bringing it up. And I was like, that's not the way. And it's, and it's weird because like I've been on such a ugh, cannot tech poly uh, for the last few weeks. But um, the last week in particular, like my empathy has kind of grown for her again because like I feel, like I said in my last video, that Adam has got to the point where he's just like, I've done this and I've done that. And again, we're talking about like some basic stuff like running a bath or making a cup of tea or whatever. Um, and he's just like, well, I'm, I'm bet, I'm, I'm, I'm sorted. I've done everything that I needed to do to change. Like, and you're still not happy. Like, and even the way his attitude with her, when he was talking about it then in the apartment, I thought was just kind of off. So yeah, so she's making that comment about, oh, maybe I just need to stop talking about it then. Cause that would be better for us, which is a no, no, because eventually like what happened later, you will just erupt because you just become so like resentful of this person who is just not making and also as well it's got to be a complete like your your head's got to be frazzled why would you ever want to be in a situation with someone where you don't really know where you stand with them and you're too scared to say what's on your mind in case you push them further away like you know i want you taking me for warts and all because because if i'm honest yeah if there is something that i'm asking for and something that isn't happening then there's one or two things here. Either I'm being disproportionate in what I'm asking for, or B, you're not meeting me halfway. And I think for what Polly's asking for, but I mean, I did get a bit confused a bit later on, but I'll come back to that in a minute. But for what she's asking for in this moment, for what she's asking for, for what she's saying, yeah, is that, you know, that she doesn't know where she stands with him because the PDA thing still isn't there. And, and he's very much like, I'm never going to be that never going to be that and then he said which i thought was absolutely ridiculous yeah he goes i'm not being funny yeah but if i really wanted to be with you and you said to me to stop doing x y and z right then i'd have stopped it yesterday to me you could have caught the camera Cut the camera and call it a day. We don't need to bother going to no dinner party and if we go in as single people. Because what do you what do you mean if you really wanted to be with me? What I'm asking you for, you would have stopped it yesterday. So again, at this point, it's still the case that she's asking for this PDA and these words of affirmation, which he's unable to deliver. Right. So remember, he's, she's not asking him to go and mine to Japan. She's not asking him to go down deep, deep, deep sea diving or to go and find a new planet in space. She's asking you to just tell me that that you like me. Tell me, you know, give me a compliment every now and again. You know, show some kind of like PDA. And I think, you know, I've ridiculed it before because I was just like, you know, what, what, she really wants this. Like, I want you to touch me in front of everybody. Like, but I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that. I think it's just that kind of that that outward pride right of being with your partner like you know which i get that not everybody wants to do the whole holding hands thing and whatever and that's fine all right but i think little things i don't know like, it, it seems to be that everybody because later on people are kind of supporting him and stuff and like oh you know he's he's, he's got this real this real issue about being intimate and stuff but again i don't buy it I don't buy it. I'm not saying that everybody is out here necking on people. I don't think that. But I I would love to know, like, what his history has been. Like, and whether he's ever been out with his girl at a bar or, you know, a restaurant and stuff. And, you know, he's ever just sat there and just had his arm around her on the chair. Like, you know, no one's asking you to go and hump her brains out while she's eating pasta. But you could just, you know, just just show that you that you because it, it is very closed like his body language is very closed i've noticed that um so yeah that's a bit weird so anyway so that line to me my mouth is already open i was like i can't i actually had to rewind it like i actually had to rewind it to be like did i just hear what he just said there correctly and she kind of just glossed over it like it like, like she didn't quite hear that and i was like that needs to be your wake up call anyway so they're not going into this dinner party in any kind of good way. He's just like, look, I'm not going around in circles about this now, um, again. Um, you know, and he's quite angry with her about it and the fact that she keeps talking about it, basically. Um, but, you know, fair play to her. She kind of she does hold her own, 
but it does feel like they're not getting through to each other because it's you know what it feels like it feels like when you are literally banging your head against a brick wall and you're doing the same things and expecting different results because she's like oh you know i really want him to you know remember what it was like after my homestay and it's like but that was one period of time in like a six week period where things were cushy like so on his whim and his say so yeah like you it, it's almost like you're hanging on to that one period of time and it's like well you shouldn't have to hold on to that one period of time where you were like satisfactory for him like you know all of you like i'm not saying that you're perfect or that someone should love you know absolutely adore all your flaws obviously not but for him to just for you to for you to pick out one time that he basically was excited about you that one particular time and want things to just be like that it's just like man it, it, it it's coupled with the fact that he's just said if he wanted to he would mate i don't think you need to hear nothing else personally Anyway, so they get to the commitment ceremony and Lacey and Nathan are the first ones to get there. And the the experts, I mean, they're really excited to kind of see what, what the last um, kind of dinner party is going to bring and whether they're going to take on any of the advice that they were kind of given. And yeah, Nathan and Lacey walk in looking like a million bucks. They look good uh, and they're strong. You know, they they just look like a really happy couple that was it that was the strongest couple and and that they basically they're, they're, they're you know they're kind of bragging about it really but but in like a good way not in like a hey gosh guys we're just the best like in a genuine you know we know that we're good and it, it, what an amazing journey that we've had to get here because they were saying before they got there as well or nathan was anyway that he never expected that he would make it to the end like that he would actually find someone that he would actually get to the end of the experiment with and i thought that was really cool and um, i actually heard a lot from nathan today just in terms of giving like opinions and stuff more so than any other episode so anyway they're chilling luke and pilot there luke and amy that come through uh, and again they look great you know very very strong entrance and stuff and the experts are like yeah, yeah they're looking good um and obviously they you know she'd written leave before so they were very keen to, to kind of see whether or not that was like a genuine thing and you know when luke's talking about it and stuff and he's talking about how the last week has been he's talking about it in a in a really i guess positive way um and how you know they're really good now basically and amy's kind of giving face to be like i don't know about all of that <laughs> but we're here do you know what I mean? we're here the rings are on i don't know about all of that um and the experts also pick up on that as well and you know, they're like, he is giving a bit of a different story and I'm not really buying it um, based on Amy's responses. Polly basically got hammered by all the girls being just like, you know, you deserve better, you should know your worth. So they were like, you know, Polly was really sad about it. Um, so, yeah, they're very much like, oh, it's going to be interesting to see what they're like when they come in. Then Sasha and Ross come in uh, and again, high energy. Um, I thought everyone looked really nice, by the way. I thought everyone kind of made like an effort and... You know, it felt like final dinner party vibes. Um, I thought Sasha looks nice. And yeah, like they're, they're quite excited, especially because again, she'd written leave the week before. So, or the last episode. So, oh, Sasha and Luke were talking, that's it, before Polly and Adam got there. So Luke was, um, and I found this was weird from what the experts said as well. So Luke was saying to Sasha how, you know, how he really likes Amy and how he'd be really gutted if it didn't work out in the end because of how much he likes her um, and how he's very much aware of the mistakes that he's made and the stupid lies that he's told and um, and yes, there might have been reasons for it, but, you know, we are where we are. We have to we have to accept where we are and hopefully we can move forward and, you know. And I was like, it was a really vulnerable moment and I was like, oh, that's really cool that he's been so honest about his feelings and stuff. And the fact that him and Sasha bearing in mind she cut off his glass around the table the other day like but you know they've, they've obviously found a middle ground again for them to kind of share that moment but then the experts mal was like ah, uh, you know we've noticed that with luke he doesn't read the room very well or doesn't read his partner um and yet again we kind of see that like he's really missing like he's being vulnerable but we see he's missing the mark again here and i was like does she mean because he's not talking to amy about it because like he seems like he's very in touch with how he's feeling he's very much taking accountability for the crap position that they're in um i didn't really understand what they meant about missing the mark but okay um then polly and adam walk in 
And again, they're walking quite strong. And Shannon even says, like, there is this thing, because when they're in the car, they were sat on opposite sides of the car. They weren't even touching, right? And they, they come in, and the, the show of it all is that, you know, everything's great, guys. It's giving Instagram sheen. It's giving, it's just lovely here in the Polly and Adam bubble. And it's just, it's just so obvious that it's not. So they're pretty much split up as soon as they get in there. And Adam's talking to the boys, Polly's talking to the girls. The girls are like, oh, you know, so how are you and stuff? And she's like, not good. Almost straight away. And almost to the point where I thought she's gonna start crying. I was like, this, that's not great. And he's saying to the boys, like, ah, oh, you know, it's just draining. Like, all we do is kind of argue. And he's like, I do care about her. And I care about her more than she probably realises. But again, I find that really... Again, we don't live with them. So, you know, who, who are we to know? But just from what I've seen, I'm like, I don't get how you can care about someone like this. And not understand what she's saying. Like, I just, I just don't really get it. Anyway, before Polly got there... Lacey and Amy were talking and they were saying how, you know, it's just a shame because Polly doesn't really get any compliments from him and that kind of stuff. And then Amy's like, oh, that's interesting because he didn't struggle giving me compliments at all. And one example of that is when I was, we were getting that lingerie for Polly, that he was like, oh, maybe you can model it because you look sexy and stuff and da 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 da, da. And he was, and she was like, oh, I took it as banter before, and I just thought he was just bantering. But now that you're saying that, like, he, he, not only that he struggles giving Polly a compliment, but he actively doesn't, it makes me think, well, hang on a minute, that's a bit weird. And Lacey was like, that comment that he just made to you, bearing in mind that he doesn't compliment Polly, is muggy. That is a bit muggy. So Amy was like, well, maybe I need to tell Polly then. So when Polly comes in, and they're talking, and they're, you know, she's talking about the situation that they're in, and you know, and how the fact that when she talks about the things that are, are concerning her, that all she's doing is kind of pushing him further away. Um, to which the experts do say that it is a bit of a, a cyclical thing in that the more that that Polly is looking for this kind of reinforcement, this this af this confirmation that she's enough from Adam, it, it is inherently pushing him further away because that's what she's craving and the more she craves it, it, it it's and I, and I do kind of understand that to a degree because there's nothing worse than when someone is kind of like just just let me get there do you know what I mean and the more that you push for something the, the less inclined I'm wanting to to, to kind of just do it because it's not off my own back it's not authentic um but I think what she's asking for it should be something that they're doing like I understand different love languages or whatever but he's not even saying but look I'm showing you that like uh, you know, by doing this, that's how, he's not even doing that. He's just getting angry about the fact that she's asking for anything. Anyway, Amy basically tells Polly the the story about the lingerie thing, and she's fuming. And I think rightly so. I think again, it's more just embarrassing, really, because again, you've got this person who you know you're already probably feeling a bit insecure about. Like you've, you've probably become like really good friends now, but again, aesthetically, based on the kind of things that. Adam has, has has kind of laid out there and made clear for everybody that you're not his general type. So to then see someone who might be more of his type, even though she's blonde, um, you know, that's got to be difficult to hear that you want her to model stuff for you because you think it's sexy and yet there's there's nothing there. Anyway, and then she's and then what I found confusing, she was saying to the girls that like she's confused because the flirting has been there. So, you know, he's been flirty, like he slapped her bum, um, you know, like the little kisses and stuff. And I was like, well then what, what is it, what is it that we're complaining about then? Because if you're saying that like the, the flirting and the, and the tactile stuff is there, what is it again that you said that he wasn't doing? Because isn't that what you wanted him to do? Again, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, like, in the comments, because I, maybe I've, I have missed something, but is it that she wanted the, the bum touching and the kissing that it needed to be in front of someone? Is that what it is? Because for me, when, and I think I said it before, when um, they're alone, because not everybody likes PDA, I thought that he wasn't doing any of that. So, you know, if you if you're getting some of that, then maybe if he genuinely is someone that doesn't do those kind of things publicly, maybe that's just the route to kind of build that naturally and you just need to be patient. Um, unless your gut is telling you, which it probably is because it's telling a lot of us online, um, that 
the reason he's not doing those things regularly or, you know, not behind pull curtains um, is because he's not really feeling it. And maybe you know that deep down too. Anyway, so then they uh, go to sit sit down around the table and you've got like Adam and Polly opposite Luke and Adam. Then you've got Nathan and Lacey opposite Sasha and Ross. Um, so they're kind of, it's really awkward. So, you know, you've got people like Luke and Amy that are trying to be quite jovial. Then Nathan and Lacey are also quite jovial. In fact, everyone seems quite jovial aside from Polly and Adam. But they really kind of still focus because they almost get into it straight away. Um, because it's this awkward thing and the experts called it out as well. Like, they've got this thing where they don't really talk or, I guess, they've attempted to talk about things previously and it's not gone anywhere. So they've come into this now still kind of you know, heated because he's feeling that like he's the hard done by person. She's feeling like she's a hard done by person, particularly that she's just heard this whole lingerie story. So they're both Vex, right? And Amy's like, you know, how you how you doing, Adam? And he's like, amazing. I think Lacey asked the same question and he's like, amazing. And he's like, and then Amy's like, oh, how how are the how are the two of you together? And he's like, amazing. And she's like, really? And he's like, um, well, you know, like I'm just drained and, you know, fed up and like all these different things start coming out. So it's just really interesting that again, when asked the question, his immediate response, like a lot of people do, is to be like, yeah, everything's great, everything's cool. But actually what you're feeling is fed up, deflated, annoyed. And what the experts are saying is that like, what they tend to do is, They've, they've got, even if they're not talking, there's a lot that they're doing within the not speaking space. So it might be that they're talking to someone else or that they're just throwing these like passive aggressive jibes at each other. So, and then just waiting for like someone who bites and then it blows up. I think Polly does say something like, you know, just something on the lines of, I don't know, what, you know, you know, what's wrong with you because you, you think that everything's my fault. And actually like, you know, you're not seeing that my feelings are here as well. And then she says something to him, something that got him to bite. And he's like, well, give me an example then. Um, and I think she was trying to say that he's been, that he's been inconsistent and therefore had been untruthful about some things. So he was like, give me a list then of when I've done that. And she was like, you know, well, you, you know, you touching me on my bum and stuff and, you know, the kisses and whatever. Um, and he was like, I've not, I've not, I've not done that. I was like, I've picked, I've picked a hair off, off your bum, off your bum, like at some point, if you had something on there, he's like, but he's like, I've not kissed you, like, uh, and stuff. And I find, I find that really weird because I'm like, well, why would she lie about that? But then also, why, like, if you blatantly have, why would you deny it? Unless, of course, he knows that to, sh to have shown those levels or those bits and stuff that it would be confusing. I don't know, but he seemed very resolute that he hadn't done any of the things in which that she'd said. And then she was like, oh, you know, this is this is why my head is so messed up and stuff. And like, and I've already said that these, these you know, the things I'm asking for, I'm going to start asking for them because just doing us no, no good. And he's like, yeah, but you, but that's the thing. Your word means nothing because you do it all the time anyway. Like you, you said you weren't going to talk about these things and you're still bringing them up anyway. And then the argument gets like more heated. Because he's like, oh, you know, I have... I, we've not been intimate or something along the lines of that there was so much said yeah that it's really hard to remember exactly what they said um because i didn't write it all down but he made some comment about like oh you know if i wanted to be that way with you i would be or something oh that was it like he goes um you know if you think all these things about me then what what are you begging it for what are you begging it from me for or whatever there were a few times around that table yeah where people were like literally bulging their eyes out of their face to be like, I cannot believe that you just said that. Um, I think the first one was when when Polly brought up about the lingerie and she's like, you know, you made me look like an idiot again and you're not thinking about my feelings. Um, and she and she mentioned about the lingerie thing. And as she's mentioned it, like Amy's like drinking her wine and she's just like... And it's like, yeah, I, I, I spilled that tea. That was me. Call me Mrs. Tetley. <laughs> like, and he was like, you know, oh, but that's just banter. And she's like, yeah, but it's not banter though. And even experts are like, people label a lot. And it happens even in friendships as well, actually, not even just relationships, but people will label things as banter and 
like just get away with this saying because like oh, I just you know I get a sense of humor and I never forget like I got a friend of mine at uni and um we all kind of played a bit of a trick on him which at the time I thought was really really harmless so I was like oh this is going to be really really funny it was Valentine's Day and I think it was the first Valentine's Day that we had within our first year but bearing in mind that we started in September so this is like our kind of second term so it's like kind of like three, four, five months of knowing each other. Anyway, one of the girls on the floor was like, oh, what, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna send him a Valentine's card um, from an anonymous person and be like, oh, basically I wanna meet you later. They delivered the letter and I remember him coming to my room being all excited about this person and stuff. But obviously we were all in on it. I mean, we were all in on the fact that this is just one of the girls on the floor. Anyway, so he's like, I'm gonna go down to town. I'm gonna get like a new shirt and stuff. And in fact, if, even if I'm saying this, as far as it did go a bit too far. So he's gone and got this shirt, and basically my other friend, um, who's a guy, gonna dress up as 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 who his Valentine was gonna be. So he borrowed my uh, my friend on the floor, borrowed her dress thing, put on some of her makeup and her slippers. He got to his room, um, and like, because I think I was keeping him in my room for a little while. And then we went to my friend's room to like, ah, oh, this is where the Valentine is. And it turned out to be my friend, the dude in the dress. And he was like, you know, be my Valentine. Um, and obviously we were all just like, oh, it's really, really funny. Like, ah, uh, you know, it's, it's something that I'm sure that you will laugh at. It's Bance. Um, cut a long story short, like he was very upset. Like, I mean, you know, he, he used to have like these, um, kind of like army knives and stuff. And I remember him like basically like punching one of these knives into his wardrobe before he stormed out of the building. Um, and then ended up like going into into the town of the uni that I was at um, and getting arrested by the police because and I, I'm not quite sure exactly what he did, but it was bad enough that they had to arrest him anyway. And I never forget like afterwards, because of, you know, we, there was about 20 people on our floor and we were all just like, I don't understand as to why you're reacting that kind of way. Like, it was just a joke. Like, it was just bants. And it took for him to explain, like, you know, how it was for him and how it, how it felt for him. It wasn't funny. And I've never forgotten that story because as much as, like, there was no literally zero mal intent at all, like, whatsoever, it was just a, a joke that you play on your mates. Um, you've, you've, you have to take on board how someone, if, if you care about the person anyway, you have to take on board how that person feels. And I feel in that moment for Polly, like you've got this skinny mini, like who is, you know, someone who she naturally feels a little bit like, uh, you know, insecure about that you, and, and you've never given her a compliment. It, it, does that stem from the fact that you don't feel those things? So it's feeding even more into insecurities. Like you hear this story about the lingerie thing and I get it, you sprung it on him. He has to kind of defend his position to a degree, but, it's like there wasn't any, like, there's no contrition whatsoever. I remember, and even Paul said it, he was like, all it would have taken is an apology, like, because it gets worse. So they continue to argue. Then, um, and, he, and, he, and he said that thing about the begging it thing, which everyone's shut by. Then he comes out again with the, you know, I'm not being funny, but like, if I, if I really liked you and stuff, then actually I'd be doing it. Like, I, I would, the things you're telling me to not do, I wouldn't do them. And again, everyone's face is like, what? are you even saying basically like do you want to be with polly and he's like no, do i see this, this marriage working out uh, i don't think so i'm not sure because of, of the arguments and stuff but again because he's so pent up by i'm guessing this very public argument that they're having um and i think that's adding to his like, because he's saying, because in the one breath he's talking about how mature he is and stuff, but like then some of the responses he's giving is like, you are literally arguing like a two-year-old. Um, but, you know, Polly's mouth is really filthy as well. So I think, you know, when she's telling him that he's a, I'm not going to use all the words that she uses and stuff, but like she's, she's, she's cussing some bad wood around the table. Um, it all culminates um, because everyone's trying to kind of help a little bit and trying to like, trying to chime in a, a little bit. Uh, to kind of add some help and stuff, but it just gets worse. Because the argument is getting worse and worse, it gets the bubbling point where Polly basically turns around and says that you are a narcissist. And he's like, oh, what? Like, and he like kicks his table, he kicks his chair out and like he storms out and stuff. And I didn't realize from the clip that I think he was actually crying. I think because when, because all the boys go out to, 
uh, checking him and stuff. And Pilate's like, yeah, go on, go on and support him. Yeah, because you're all a pack of a, a pack of D-heads and, and, and stuff. So, she, so she's on the warpath now. She's coming for everybody. And when he's outside and he's vaping and like, like he's, he's like he's wiping his wiping tears and stuff. And I thought, OK, so because initially I just thought, all right, this is a bit dramatic. I guess nobody wants to be called a narcissist, right? And I think it is a term that definitely gets banded about a lot. And if, you know, and if the experts are saying that he's not a narcissist, then who am I to argue? But it's my channel. I don't agree. <laughs> I don't agree. Paul was like, a narcissist is someone who's got like a projected sense of self-importance and they don't have any empathy or thought for other people. And what's clear is that Adam has demonstrated that he has got thoughts and cares about other people. But I'm like, it's really easy, yeah, to care about people that don't always have to see the real you. Do you know what I mean? And th the reason I say that is, like, I don't doubt that... Maybe it's more narcissistic tendencies than, than an out-and-out -out narcissist, but, like, having been, again, in a very toxic situation with someone and, you know, them portraying on the outside, even to me, like with all the love bombing and all that kind of stuff, like there's there's a lot of 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 presenting yourself as again the the victim, the hard done by person, the most rational and all that kind of stuff. And then actually the things that you're doing aren't that. So just take that argument he's had with Polly. You're sat in front of a room of people, and you're getting annoyed because she's basically calling you out for certain things. And actually because she's still voicing the things that she's not content with, you're like, oh, you know, nothing's ever good enough. Like, and it's like, but what, you're not hearing the things that she's, that she needs from you. Like, a really, really simple things that would probably help her and move the relationship on, but you're refusing to do them. And then you're making out that like, she's being this irrational, disproportionate person by asking for these things that you're never going to give her. And actually, if I even wanted to be with you, really, I would do them. Like, does that not scream of some levels of narcissism to anyone else? Or is that just me? I don't know, like, but I, I, I can understand why in that moment she would just like, you're a narcissist. Because it, it, it kind of felt, again, from the edit, maybe that's not how it was, but from the edit, it kind of felt like it's all about you, bro. It's all about you. You're not really spending any time to think about Polly. Um, and he was like, you know, you, you know, I told you you were selfish before and stuff and da 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 da. And she was like, yeah, well, I've worked on that. It was just a, a complete, like, sure. So anyway, he eventually comes back in and then he swaps with uh, Nathan, I think. So Nathan sits where Polly was, uh, where, he, where Adam was sat and he sits where Nathan was sat. He's not over the narcissist comment. He's like, the worst thing. But the thing is as well, like, and I'm not, I'm not being funny, but like, you know, for someone to be so offended about a word, but not even pronounce the word properly. I was just like, well then how, like, do you know what a narcissist is then? Because I wouldn't want to be classed as a narcissist. Do you know what I mean? I, would, I, I definitely wouldn't want to have that label, but I'd be able to pronounce the word that I'm offended by. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it was just kind of giving, do you, do you, because he's like, it's the worst thing you could ever call someone. And I was like, I don't know if it's the worst thing. It's definitely not something that I would like to be coined or have any kind of connotations to me. But I was just like, I don't know, are you, are you getting more offended about what you think the word is than what it actually is? Because you didn't even, because you called it like a narc narcissist or something. And then when someone tries to correct it, I think like Sasha is like, it's a narcissist. He's like, I don't, whatever it is. Um, anyway, that's when Amy is like, look, should we go for a chat and stuff? And she goes out and she tries to really, uh, I guess, fight Polly's corner and explain why she feels the way that she feels and stuff. And I think the experts kind of back her and it's like, I can, you know, I can see what she's trying to do here. And he's still very much just like, you know, uh, out of respect for her, I wouldn't speak to her in the way that she does. Like she calls me all these things and stuff. And Amy's like, yeah, but she's hurting. Like the reason she's saying these things to you is because she's hurting. And as I say, the experts are like, you know, a lot of, of behavior comes from like, yeah, when someone's hurt and stuff, doesn't mean that you know, her telling him that she doesn't want to be around him and that kind of stuff doesn't mean that that's what she actually feels. Sorry, I think just before um, Amy takes him out for a chat, I think he comes back in from sitting out, from storming out. He sits by Lacey and that's when they're kind of like having this kind of to and fro. And it gets to the point where 
Polly apologizes for calling him a narcissist because she's like, that's the worst thing you can call someone. And and she's like, no, I've just taken it back. And he isn't satisfied with that apology because he's like, you've only taken it back because Lacey piped up. No offense. Um, and she's like, this is exactly what I mean. Like nothing's ever good enough for you. Um, but I can kind of, in that instance, I can kind of see both sides because I was like, I, she has apologized, bro. So, you know, in this particular heated moment, I would take that as something because it's more than what you've done. But I can also appreciate that the, the delivery of, of her apology and her taking it back, it didn't feel like it was a, look, I, I, I am genuinely sorry. Like, it didn't feel like that. So I can understand why it was a bit like, uh. So yeah, then Amy takes him out. Then they come back. He then sits next to Polly. Well, prior to that, actually, Sasha and Ross and Nathan and Lacey are talking about the whole love bomb thing and that he dropped the album. And then she's like, you know, what do you love about her? And he's telling everyone about what he loves about her. And, you know, how funny she is and you know, down to earth and grounded. And, um, you know, and then they've got this whole little cute thing that they do. Like, it just, it, I, I can't do it, but like, she's just like an Elvis Presley mouth thing. So when she does the, <laughs> like, and he's, and he's like pulling, it's just this really cute thing that they've got going on. And everyone's like, oh my God, this is like Disney. It's like pretty cute, pretty cute. But yeah, the honesty box comes out and, oh, that was, she, the question that she asked him was like, oh, when, um, when you met me compared to now, like, wh how have your feelings changed? And he basically was like, I didn't know who you were then. And like now, he's like, I can't believe that I've got to the point where there's so many things that I love about you and that we've actually made it to the end. It was a really, really sweet answer, actually. And then I think his question was, what has been either the most challenging thing about our marriage or something like that, or the worst part. And I think she was I think she was like, oh, the thing that I was worried about the most was about us like maybe not connecting on like a deeper level and stuff. She's like, but um, we've connected and, you know, like basically we're in love. So they, they were sound, Sasha and Ross. And her question to him or his question to her what do you think our biggest concern is basically for our marriage? And she was like, oh, because I thought she was going to say the distance, but she was like, it's more to do with the eruptions and the volatility of those eruptions. And like, she's like, you know, I love you so much and it would be a shame for this not to work out because I want it to work out so bad. And that's when she gives her whole, you know, Keisha Cole, like, love, never knew what I was missing. Like, she is proper, like, I love you so much and I'm never gonna live with another man like you. And I was like, that's really, really sweet. And, um, you know, he consoled her and stuff and dried her tears. And, you know, I, I, again, I've kind of fallen out of like favor with Sasha a little bit, like for the way that she went on with like Luke and stuff before. But in that moment, I was like, I really feel for you, man. And I actually do hope that they do work, work it all out and stuff. Oh, actually, just before Luke and Amy's one, at some point, I can't remember exactly when it was, but when Luke, when Adam and Polly were going at it, uh, because Polly's not wearing her wedding ring, and apparently she's not been wearing it for like the last three weeks, and she's she's like, you know, I've heard, I've basically heard, like, you've told me that you don't think this is going to go anywhere. So she's just like, you know, I've taken it off. And he was like, it's muggy, it's disrespectful. And the rest of the table was just like, but what you've said to her has been moggy and disrespectful. So that's the reason why she's taking it off. And he wasn't really listening. So Lacey had to get a little bit leery to be like, look, bro, yeah, she's taking the effing ring off, yeah, because she doesn't effing believe that there's any point in wearing it because she's upset. Like, how do you not get that? So he's like, you know, at the end of the day, people don't, People don't, people don't do things when they're upset like that. I mean, that's disrespectful. And you can't say that you like someone and, and this and the other and then go and do something like that. And then Luke gets really animated and he's like, dude, I dashed off my whole wedding ring. I mean, I did think there was a point to being like, maybe just don't talk about that so much. But the point he was trying to make was people do stupid things even though they care about somebody. And him and Adam kind of got into it a little bit. He was like, well, you know, you're throwing your ring at people, yeah. Like, basically, it's not something to be advertising. Like, but he was, but I got Luke's point. He was trying to say everybody can do something stupid that doesn't take away from how they feel about the person, doesn't take away how I feel about Amy. Um, and he really was like, you know, I threw the ring. I, I, I embarrassed her in front of her friends in the restaurant. I'm like, all right, bro. Calm down. I get the point, yeah, but you're not making it sound a lot too good. <laughs> um, so anyway, so when it gets to their honesty box, his question to Amy was, 
Uh, do, do, am I the husband that you asked for? And she's like, no. Nah. No, like, I asked for a gentleman. Like, honesty is, like, really big to me. Like, really, really, really big. And, you know, I feel that with some of the, the lies that you've told, you can't build a relationship, a friendship, a marriage, unless there's honesty and trust. Um, and again, the experts is like, well, bang on. I mean, I think we, we all are, really. I don't think that takes a rocket scientist. Um, then her question to him was, is there one thing you could change about me? What would that be? And his first answer is um, to give me a clean slate. I would really appreciate and, you know, it'd be really good because of, you know, where we're at now, even though I know it's not been great, if you were able to give me a clean slate. And... The experts again and like you know he's fighting for this relationship here like he he really wants her to give to give him another chance and she's like okay that's lovely but again about me like what is there anything about me that you would change to look back sorry on some of our times that we've had together a bit more positively because we have had some really good times too so yeah and 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 I can understand why he's asking that but I, I completely agree with Paul like you know you damage the trust man so as much as like those things are there they're kind of tainted now do you know what i mean and it's going to be difficult to kind of separate the two so mm. then it gets holly there uh, polly and adam and adam the que the question is out of the rest of the couples that are here including yourselves rate them from who from who you think is going to last in the according like time bracket so one was one week one was one month one was one year and one was forever so he goes right well that's fair enough then well first off one week me and paul uh one month luke and adam so uh, one week me and paul one month luke and amy and I don't even know whether he got to Sasha and Ross and Luke and Nathan, uh, Nathan and Lacey. But then she was like, you know, why have you got to be such a... Mm -hmm. about it? Um, it's like, what have I said? Like, you know, what, 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 will you tell me then, yeah? Will you tell me who, who else is going to be one week, Paul? Who else is going to be one week? I think every... I, I, to be honest, I can't even remember because there were so many people talking and so many people having input in this conversation, this argument. Um, that I can't even remember who said what, but I just remember that it resulted, yeah, in Polly basically saying, like, she got to the point where she was, she cussed him up, told him that he was a D-head, basically he was a waste man, you're an idiot, you're a loser, but she was going in and going ham, and to the point where I was like, actually, do you know what, even if you're hurting, I don't think that's something that you can really come back from, to be honest. And she's like, I don't want to be around you. And she's like, well, that's the case. You can F off then. F off then. Um, and then she, but then he doesn't go anywhere. So then she eventually gets up and she was like, you know, you have wasted my time. You've led me on, right? You've embarrassed me and you peed me off. You effing see you next Tuesday. Now, to me, I didn't realise that it was going to get that bad because he was like, you know, you're embarrassing yourself. He's like, I don't care about embarrassing myself. And he's like, you know, do you see that no one's chasing after you because no one thinks that you're right? He's like, I don't care about nobody else. I don't care about nobody else. You're an effing... Si <sighs> it was at that point that I kind of had to say, do you know what, Polly? As much as it might be like a vulgar, yeah, like a vulgar, can't imagine you taking that mouth into St Mary's Church on Sunday. It was coming. It was coming. Because th there is so much, you've, you've got your common sense is fitting in, you've got your guts filling in, you've got probably all the stuff that Alfie's already told you, you've got all the all your girlfriends saying the same thing, your national television, you've already said about how embarrassing and shameful it is that, like, you know, you feel like, and getting bargain basic level stuff. Alex has told you, like, he's now basically told that you're begging it, yeah, you're begging it, and if I wanted to, I would. Um, and still trying to make out that you're some kind of crazy person for asking someone to say nice things about you. <laughs> yeah, like, and that you're lying. Because when she said about the sleeping together thing, because when he said about the begging it, she was like, you know, well, well, you were begging it for the first three weeks, weren't you? And she's like, and he was like, um, we slept together three times, mate. And she's like, yeah, but, you know. And, and I did think that was kind of like, Oh, this is a really cringy comment you just made there, yeah, because you're talking like it was morning, noon and night and it sounds like it was more just like all right then. Once every three <laughs> once every once every week for three weeks. Um so I think she's just hurt, man. Hurt and upset. So I think that came through and I'll be honest, as I said, it was a bit vulgar and I don't know whether 
for me, I would then be looking to come back on the back of it. I would just be like, I said what I said. Maybe I shouldn't have got, maybe I shouldn't have got so angry about it, but I'm going to stand 10 toes down. It's done. But then it flashes to like the next episode of Final Vows and like who's going to get to Final Vows basically. And there's a clip of Polly and Adam. I, you not. There is a clip of Polly and Adam. So I was like, well, surely after you calling me that in front of a room full of people and the nation, it's done. But cleaning up. So you've got Luke and Amy. They're, you know, she's got a lot to think about. I, I mean, I don't know. I can't see Amy moving further forward with this, really. She makes a comment about things might be good now but I need to appreciate and understand whether I want this for my future or to leave it in the past. And I feel like she's she's too, and rightly so, like principled on, on her fundamentals to go, yeah, I'm gonna overlook all that mess. Mm, I, I, don't, I don't see that going through. You've got uh, Sasha and Ross, and uh, again, they look really cool, but it looks as though that kind of breaks down because she gets this feeling that he's not gonna move to Warsaw. Um, and then there's all kinds of subbing. You've got Nathan and Lacey, and I just think they're just trying to make that dramatic because they're obviously going to say yes. And then, yeah, Polly and Adam, like they uh, they actually meet at the altar and it looks as though that they haven't even finished doing the vows before Adam's off. And I'm like, how did you even get to the point where you even met at the altar? She just called you the sea bum. So, yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. But, wow, what a final dinner party. What a final dinner party. This season has just... It, it, it's been this ferocious in terms of, like, just beef the whole time. The whole time. Like, wow. So, yeah, I'd love to know what you guys thought of this. Um, please let me know in the comments below um, who do you think is actually going to make it to Final Vows. And I guess the same question, actually... If, if they do make it to Final Vows and they do end up like doing life together, like who do we think will last a week, a month, a year, forever? Because there are still some couples out there. I was just watching um, Come Down With Me. Did it Come Down With Me? Um, with my mum yesterday. And Nicole, um, who was in Love Is Blind, who married Benaya, like she was on Come Down With Me. And I was like, what? She was singing Whitney Houston, I Will Always Love You. Nicole can sing. So I was like, what? And I said to my mum, I was like, she was in Love is Blind. And I checked to see, and well, from what I saw anyway, I don't know if it was the most accurate report, but they're still together. They're still married. So people people can still be like, you know, happy and after these shows and stuff. Um, so it'd be interesting to see who, yeah, who, who actually like gets to that point. I guess we'll see. But anyway, thank you so much for watching with me. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, then please drop me a like and subscribe. That would be awesome. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>